Hello everyone in the VC is Matt and I had a day off work so I thought I would do a video and I'm going to do a response to a contest and this is from Farley of Farley's Retro Fan Cave on the VC. He's uh, reached the milestone of 500 subscriptions and so he's having a contest called the Rule of Fives and uh, so good deal. Congratulations on the subs Farley. I'm sure you're going to get a lot more in the, in the uh, days and weeks to come. I went over and subscribed the other day and got a good channel over there and you make a good addition to the VC and it's good to have you aboard. I'm not sure how long you've been a member here but I saw Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame, did a response to your contest about a week or so ago and he did his usual excellent job uh, in, re in the response. I thought it sounded like a fun contest so I thought I would join in and uh, I had just done a video for this and for some reason it didn't didn't I don't know what happened to it. It disappeared into thin air. So this is sort of a second take of it. But uh, anyway, um, so Farley's contest is uh, several questions, and each question has requires five responses. Uh, seems pretty straightforward and simple, the questions on the face of them. But they're anything but because they uh, ask you to name your five favorite this and your five favorite that and so on. And, uh, of course, you know how that works out in the VC. If you, your five favorite whatever is you start thinking about the obvious choices first and then you start thinking about others and then before you know it, you've got 20 or 30 choices and you're trying to figure out what to leave out and what to include. And There's always that uh, maxim that everyone says, myself included, that if you ask me this same question next week, uh, I'll probably give you a different answer. But anyway, um, let's just get into it. Um, the first question is your five favorite vocalists. And so, number one, didn't have any problem. The first, first three I really didn't have any problem with. Um, I'm going to go John Lennon. And really the Beatles, because, I mean, just, just uh, all of them are great singers. Well, John, Paul, George, anyway. Great harmonies. Ringo has his moments, of course, but... You know, um, but if I had to pick my favorite out of the three, it'd have to be John vocal wise. Uh, my favorite band, uh, not a lot needs to be said there. Number two, I named my dog after him, Otis Redding. And again, there's not much else needs to be said as far as great vocalist and just uh, incredible. I mean, it's uh, so many great songs. Um, Thing about Otis is uh, lost him uh, 1967. I think he was 27 years old. Far too far too soon that uh, he had done just incredible, incredible body of music that he left behind. But you kind of got the feeling that he wasn't anywhere near done. Um, yeah, kind of get the feeling that he wasn't wasn't even hadn't even uh, uh, reached his full potential yet. So uh, it's a tragic. We'll never know what we missed out on by the fact that he uh, died in a plane crash. But he does leave behind some great, wonderful music and uh, one of the one of the best singers of all time, in my opinion. And uh, number three, this is one that Brandon showed. In fact, this very same record it's my, happens to be my favorite live album of all time. Sam Cooke. I mean, again, this is not not a whole lot you got to say. Just, just listen to the music, listen to the voice. Just an incredible singer, and uh, one of the best of all time, in my opinion, without a doubt. We need some women in here, which is always the case. Uh, so I'm going Mary Weiss, Mary Weiss. I never know how to pronounce that with the Shangri Las. Uh, okay, technically, probably not the best female vocalist out there, even though she is really good. I think. Uh, but she does it for me. It just moves my soul and heart. And, uh, you know, there's so many others I could have picked. Uh, Debbie Harry, Chrissy Hine, Aretha Franklin, Nina Simone. Uh, you know, uh, list goes on and on. But um, Susanna Hoffs, I guess, from the Bengals. But she's, she's my favorite of the bunch. And um, she's also, I'm a big fan of the girl group stuff for the early 60s and uh, there's so many of those bands that are great 
and Shangri-Las are the best among them, and Mary's the got the attitude and the uh, uh, best singer. Really like her. Uh, anyway, moving on. I'm just going to go with the Beach Boys as a group, even though I guess if you had to pick the best vocalist out of the bunch, it'd be Carl Wilson. But they're all incredible vocalists, even even uh, even uh, the fool there was a good singer, or you know. So uh, the harmonies, like the Beatles, just just the voices and the harmonies, just just otherworldly. And what a great band! And I think that's five, but maybe I put six in here. Um, maybe I put an extra one. I'm not sure, but anyway, again, what do you, what do you need to say? Just a such a great songwriter, instrumentalist, and vocalist, and, and um, all-around musician. Prince, great vocals. Uh, five favorite guitarists is the next next uh, thing here, and I think I, uh, yeah. So uh, that was another one that was hard because there's so many, so many great ones, uh, but. Um, Here's the ones I pick. George, not the, technically the greatest guitarist, but still a great guitar uh, player in my opinion. I just I, I love the sound, uh, his guitar sound in the Beatles and his solo, and uh, maybe he goes a little too much with the slide guitar in his solo years here and there. Sometimes that's great, sometimes a little, kind of wish he might have done something else. But um, the, I, I just love the sound of the guitar and the Beatle, Beatle songs, and, and he's responsible for a lot of that. Um, old Pete from The Who, uh, especially those uh, 60s, 60s albums and singles, uh, then things like Live at Leeds, uh, just another one who, uh, he's, he's actually pretty pretty darn good guitar player, they were better out there, but uh, just the, the spirit and the part of his playing uh, always liked. Even better than that, um, Dave Davies of the Kinks. Of course, he really got me in all day and all of the night. Can be argued uh, sort of, uh, or is the uh, grandfather of punk rock and heavy metal, but there's plenty more great guitar work through the years from, from Dave. Uh, just check out Arthur. Uh, for Pruth and many of the other Kinks albums through the years, but always liked him. I should have a Jimi Hendrix album here, and I guess I forgot to get it out of the stacks. But Hendrix, you know, what what do you, what else you need to say? Uh, and there's there's plenty of others. Oh, I did uh, forgot one. This is guys not as well known as the others. Richard Thompson. He was in Fairport Convention, then later he and his wife Linda made albums together through. 70s into early 80s. He's been solo since then. Um, Fairport Convention's worth checking out. This is a, one of the greatest albums of the 80s. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And uh, check out uh, Shoot Out the Lights, the title track on YouTube, if you want to get an idea of what he sounds like. And uh, yeah, just a great guitarist there. Uh, there. There's so many others. You know, Eddie Hazel of uh, Parliament Funkadelic. Um, Jimmy Page is always fun to listen to, and you could go on and on, but um, anyway. Five favorite bass players, and I should have reorganized this stuff, I guess, from the first run through. Um, yeah, uh, Beatles pop up again, good old Paul. So many great bass lines through the years that he came up with. Um, even a lot of times when uh, some of his solo stuff that I'm not crazy about, like Silly Love Songs, which I never was a fan of, but great bass line in. But then, you know, uh, Paperback Rider or something, uh, work on Sgt. Pepper, the list just goes on and on. Uh, great bass player. And returning to The Who, of course, we got John Entwistle. He was one of the great ones. And I uh, don't have... I do have albums for the others, but I did not pull them out. Um, Bootsy Collins played with James Brown, played with Funkadelic in Parliament, of course, and then solo stuff, uh, one of the great ones. James Jamerson, who was bass player on a lot of the Motown hits of the 60s, 
and Donald Duck Dunn, who played on a lot of the Stax records, great Stax records cuts. And uh, just to get a little jazz in the mix, Charles Mingus, I'd throw in there. And I don't know, I think that's, again, six choices. But anyway, apologize for that if I lost count there. The next question is, uh, if, I, if I'm reading this correctly, five deceased musicians who you would like to, I, I think, spend the day with or have the chance to sit down and visit with or hang out with for a day. Um, so, John and Paul, uh, they were in the Beatles, Keith Moon from The Who, Joe Strummer from The Clash would be the next one. I think uh, Strummer, I, I love The Clash, and he's kind of the leader of that band. Um, he seems of famous people or well-known people that whose work I admire. He seems, um, a lot of them... I would like to meet just to be able to shake their hand or say hi to them or maybe to sit down for an hour or two to be able to just sort of bother them with questions. But as far as uh, a famous person you would actually want to know, no, no, you know, um, I don't think there's too many of them for me because it would kind of, uh, kind of ruin the magic, I guess, if you knew, um, you know, John Lennon, just as some regular person that lived up the street or whatever, that would like to be uh, have the money to be able to live up the street from someone like that. But um, and some of them don't seem like they'd be very seem like they'd be kind of assholes. Uh, so I don't know, maybe not. But it just some people that are it seem like they wouldn't be that much fun if you actually really knew them. Strummer seems like uh, pretty and and like. You know, know him from Adam, so who knows? Maybe he was a jerk, or who knows? But seems like he's pretty down to earth. Like he's he's someone that you could actually hang out and drink beer and shoot the bull with, and he'd be a fun person to know. It seems like uh, the the fifth one I picked, Robert Johnson, the, the blues guy, just because uh, there's so little known about him, and there's so much um, legend and mythology and facts that are. Uh, in question about his life and his death and so forth. He only ever made, recorded, I want to say like 32, 38 songs in two recording sessions, both of which took place in Dallas. By the way, there's only two known photographs of him. And uh, so it'd just be fun to talk to him. Uh, he died young too. I think he was 27 or 28 when he died uh, back in 1930 late 30s, I believe. Um, so someone like that where there's so much mystery about would be fun just to have a chance to talk to them and see kind of what he was all about and what he hoped to do music-wise and so forth. And um, So that'd be interesting. Um, the next question is five albums that define you as a fan. And I think the way I take that is uh, like your five favorite types of music, something that's representative of that. So, with that in mind, first one, Beatles, but not so much the Beatles only, uh, just the, what we call in America, the British Invasion, That that's my favorite type of music of all time. So the whole 60s uh, Beatles and Kinks and Rolling Stones and and all that, and I love all the '60s music, the garage rock, the well, all of it. But my favorite is is the the British stuff of uh, you know 1964 on. So the Beatles, the Kinks, the uh, the early Who '60s stuff, uh, so many of the other great British bands, Animals and stuff. But I just put a Beatles album up there as representative of all of that. Um, I said I love the girl group sound of the early '60s. I also like. Later stuff for the 80s, uh, Bangles, Blondie, Pretenders, uh, so forth and so on. But the 60s girl group stuff's really, really love that. So I've got this uh, that looks like a girl's hat box, but it's actually a set put out by Rhino Records, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. I think this is out of print now. But there's four CDs in here, and there is, uh, I don't know how many songs, probably 70, 80 songs on there. 
and just some great girl group sounds. Some of the stuff on here is, is somewhat well known, some of it is less so, but all of it is, is just really great. And just that period of music always appealed to me. Uh, number four, this is a label called Numero, Numero Records, and they put out compilation stuff mainly of uh, soul music, and they do some rock and roll stuff and some other stuff, but mainly their soul music label. And so this is just a compilation of various soul musicians and bands. This uh, particular one is called the Dynamic Label. Dynamic was uh, one of the small labels that was around in the 60s, kind of like a minor, minor, minor version of Motown or Stax. Uh, these are bands generally that aren't well known. The records didn't go anywhere because the companies didn't have any money, and most of these people made a 45 or two and disappeared back into obscurity. But, um, yeah, I've got quite a few of these numero uh, compilations, as I do also have quite a few soul music and funk music compilations. So uh, I show this not so much to uh, highlight numero records as I do to just highlight my love for soul music, funk music uh, from the you know 50s up through the mid 70s or so. Uh, love that kind of music. So this is just one of my soul music um, albums, and I could have just as well done a album by The Impressions or or Sly and the Family Stone or. Uh, you know, Curtis uh, Mayfield or or whatever. But anyway, um, uh, there's also music uh, kids call punk rock and new wave music, which are two different things, actually. But big fan of the punk rock and the new wave, so I'm just going to go with the Clash album. Uh, could have picked out the Sex Pistols or Ramones or... Whatever, but anyway, just to represent my love of uh, new wave and punk rock music, that whole period of music from say seventy seven through uh, seventy six, seventy seven through about eighty two, eighty three, was uh, just one of the richest and best periods of music there was, uh, probably second only to the what happened in the nineteen sixties. So a lot of great stuff there, and I love that stuff. Uh, yeah. So then the last question. I believe, is uh, five five of your favorite movies or five of your favorite books, and I just, I did uh, both, and I didn't um, bother to go pull the movies and books, so I'll just read them off the list. Uh, favorite movies, uh, On the Waterfront, it's Marlon Brando, great movie, he won the Academy Award for that, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, City Lights, a Charlie Chaplin movie, of course, The Right Stuff, and Diner, a movie that came out in 1982, I believe. Uh, favorite books, and there's so many that I could have picked, but uh, I went Catcher in the Rye, uh, the Bible, which is good reading, whether you, uh, depending, you know, regardless of where you stand from a spiritual, religious uh, perspective, it's, there's, there's quite a bit of uh, interesting stuff in there. Um, Macbeth, which, not a book really, it's a play, but um, it's by Shakespeare. World According to Garp, that's a good book. And um, Hunter Thompson, I picked Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail in 1972. A lot of people probably go with uh, Las Vegas, which is a great book too, but I always uh, thought the Campaign Trail book was a little bit better. It's one that I read every couple of years, it seems. So uh, I'll go with that one. And uh, there, there's tons other that I could pick. But uh, that'll do, I guess. So... That's it. Congratulations, Farley, on your subs, and uh, glad to be a subscriber to your channel. And I will be back with some more record reviews and so forth sometime soon. Hope everyone's having a good week. We'll see you.